two basic facts about building a bug out bag. Number one, it's gonna cost you some money. Be prepared for it and you'll probably be surprised if you've never built one before, how much it actually costs. The pack is a pricey purchase, the tools are gonna cost you, everything's gonna add up really fast. And if you're a noob and you just have absolutely no clue as to what you're doing, it's going to be even worse because you're gonna be making those newbie mistakes, you're gonna be buying gear that hopefully you take on the field and you test, and it doesn't really work out for you, so you gotta buy something different. That's the first fact. Fact number two, forget about number one, kind of. You can draw a good balance between time to market and cost, and that's what we're gonna break down in this video. Ah. All right, man, it's getting hot out here already. Anyways, if you don't know me by now, my call sign is Blitz. I'm the head honcho in charge here at the Survival Outpost. And in this video, we're gonna break down a common sense approach to build a bug out bag without breaking the bank. And no, I'm not talking about some sort of clickbait bullshit where I'm gonna go to the Dollar General with 50 bucks and I'm gonna build a bug out bag. Okay, that's great. You can go there and waste money. That's cool, you prove that much doesn't make any sense to me. I guess maybe the only time where it would make sense to like literally, like if you had only $50 and the world was gonna end in t less than 24 hours and you had no gear at all, maybe that might make sense, but yeah, I don't know, I, I, I still don't, I still don't get it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a balance between price and quality, starting with the pack. This idea, uh, this video of, hmm, can I build a bug out bag for less than $100? Never would have gone down if it wasn't for Rebo Gear sending me an email asking me to review their packs. I get the email, I'm like, all right, cool, this looks promising, let me go check out their Amazon page. So I go there, thousands of four and five star reviews, their prices are incredible, so I was like, yeah, definitely, send me the gear, let's make a deal, let's make this happen. So what we're looking at today is the largest pack in their lineup, but they have a lot of other packs, and I have like literally all of their packs so i just broke 20,000 subscribers thinking yeah you know this is a great way to give them some promotion and hook you guys up with some free gear so make sure you hit that subscribe button and double tap that notification bell so you get the heads up when the giveaway goes down now back to the pack review so the first thing I wanna point out about this bag is obviously it is super tactical. I've embraced this 100% and it's nice because I'm just putting whatever I want on here and my only focus is functionality. Now, the size, I would not go bigger than this for a three day bag and I don't even have this thing fully packed out yet. So let's just do a quick scan starting with the side here. Big rows of molly webbing all the way down the side which I've taken advantage of by putting an SDS. Molly 2 Rifleman's Pouch, one on that side, and then one right here on this side. So I got a folding saw right here, and then on this one, I have you know batteries and SD cards and all of my little camera gear and things of that nature. There's also compression straps, two on each side, which I absolutely love. These are great for cinching down your pack and keeping your load nice and tight when your pack is not fully packed out. One thing I want to point out, guys, is all the pouches on here, I've added myself. They do not come with the bag. I know that's probably obvious, but somebody's going to say something, and so I just need to point that out. Anyways, to the front of the bag, i got heavy-duty grab handle right here. Cordage-based zipper pulls. I'm pretty sure these are not paracord, but, um, you know, they're still nice and easy to operate using gloves. Sealed zipper seams, storm-proof, all the way around, which I think is also a nice touch. And then up here, there's one large pocket with the Velcro molly webbing across and then another row of molly webbing across right here and this larger compartment below this. And then if we rotate the pack or whatever, turn it upside down, you see there's compression straps on the bottom where I've attached my rain cover wrapped around my Miltech military issue poncho. Worth noting is a row of webbing right here. There's some on this side and some on the other side, and this can be great for attaching carabiners or other little bits and pieces of the gear. Because basically what you're looking at here is with all this webbing, 
this is a great way to carry a crap ton of gear because you fill this main compartment out with everything you need and then you start attaching pouches on here and everything else. So um, that's the modularity you get from Molly, which is just awesome. Now, turning this around to the back, what do we got going on in here? All right, so I showed you the heavy duty grab handle, lots of overstitching and fine adjustment straps right here for the shoulders nothing fancy you see there's a water bladder capability here this big big pocket now the one that i have in here is military issue and it's just a little bit too tall but as i drink more water it'll slowly slide down in there and i'll be able to velcro this completely shut but you see there's little hangers right here and i've just kind of had to rig this up to run the hose down here to kind of keep it in a secure fashion i wasn't able to actually thread it through here which is what i would have preferred but anyways that's it, the shoulder straps. Got lots of heavy duty padding because we're expecting to carry some, carry some decent weight in this three day bag. And then the back panel, same thing going on right here. This is very comfortable. I've carried this probably for a total of 10 miles without any complaints at all. Now down here at the bottom guys, gotta have some waist straps to secure that pack against you. But if you're not into waist straps or you're running a smaller load and don't need them, you can actually remove the waist straps and stow them away for use in the future. And then finally, the other thing to point out here is heavily reinforced attachment point for the shoulder harness, which is nice because if this was to rip out right there, boy, your pack is basically SOL. Also worth mentioning is the sternum strap, and this is just kind of like, I expect to see this on any pack of this size, for sure. So the sternum strap plus the weight strap is gonna keep this bag nice and secure against your body and prevent it from flopping all around while you're running through the woods from zombies or whatever your post-apocalyptic vision is. Maybe it's machines taking over the entire world. I feel like that's been done before though. So the bag itself, guys, is nothing super like high-tech or fancy per se. It's a design that we see a lot. We see this variation from 3V gear. We see a little bit of this from Maxpedition. But what I wanted to point out that I really liked about this that I haven't noticed on other packs, and maybe it's like this or not, but check out where these compression straps are actually attached. They're attached to the bottom of this main, or sorry, this exterior large compartment right here. So what that enables me to do is actually compress this load. So when you look at the pack itself, the heavy stuff is situated in the middle. And this strap and this attachment point right here, here and here, enables me to cinch down the bottom really, really tight, which really situates all the heavy stuff in the load right there in the center of the pack, kind of making like a bit of a curved shape instead of just a flat back against here. So having that ability to do the compression like that, because typically these compression straps are gonna be attached down here, but this pulls everything nice and tight and it just centers your gravity really well in this pack. So I saw that and at first I was kind of thrown off by it. I'm like, eh, I don't know about that, but it actually works and I like it. Whether it was intentional or not, it's definitely a good way to go. So I'm trying to think of the best way to show you guys all the gear that I have in here because I want to make a distinct separation between gear that I added on myself that I had pre-existing that is definitely not budget and all the gear that was budget. So maybe if I just throw the poncho on the ground and dump all the gear out of it and separate it into two piles, we'll be good to go. Yeah, let's do that.
the bag is empty. It's flat and decompressed and saggy and sad. Now, here's all our gear. This is all the essential stuff that I wanted to buy. I tried to hit that $100 price point, which I kind of failed on, but for a good reason. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump into it, starting with the big scary knife. This is a cold steel Tanto that I picked up for $20 probably 10 years ago. I have an extremely complicated paracord wrap on the handle that took me about 30 seconds to do. And for 20 bucks, you get a heavy duty plastic sheath and you get a, just a gigantic chunk of cold steel, full tang. So for 20 bucks, keeping quality in mind, but also budget, I think it's a great buy. Up next is bank line. I've had numerous people tell me I need to swap out from paracord to bank line, so hopefully y'all are happy. And I'm happy too because it's much thinner. I can carry a ton more. The strength is still on point and it's also sticky. So it's much easier to um, tie up and use than your typical paracord. So I do have this on a paracord spool, which I didn't really factor into the budget. I already had this available. Like I mentioned, guys, you gotta have some shit paper. Sorry for the bad words, but this is the truth. If you don't have toilet paper or some way to wipe yourself in the forest, life is gonna suck. So this is a biohazard bag with some toilet paper in it. Why not? Wet wipes. I did get these from the dollar store. They're super freaking cheap. So grab yourself some time if you feel like going to the dollar store. I think this is about 25 cents. The SOL Survival Medic. Now this was a cheap buy that just made lots of sense. I have shelter in here, fire, signaling component, and also a bit of first aid supplies. So this covers me for some of the items in the five C's, combustion and also shelter, and then medical, which the five C's doesn't mention, but you might wanna have some medical going on there. So. Got that covered right there. There's Tinder in there. There's a fire striker, which I never tried. Some button couplets, which might suck, but whatever the case is, great little purchase here. Resealable Ziploc bag. Then $14 on Amazon, something like that. An actual first aid kit, like a big one with lots of cool stuff in it. And basically all you need to handle medical issues but not the big ones like gunshots. So the minor medical, you're gonna cover it all with this and no problem at all. So we're talking band-aids, gauze pads, burn cream, you know, antiseptic, uh, ibuprofen, over-the-counter meds, all that kind of stuff you would expect from just your basic first aid kit for 14 bucks. Can't beat it. The flashlight is a good deal. I got two of these dirt cheap on Amazon. I think it was $6.99 for a two pack. It's powered by one AA battery and yeah, I try to remember 300 lumens. It doesn't feel like it's 300 lumens. It feels like it's a little bit less, but anyways, it works. It's enough. It doesn't have to be super fancy or super expensive. So this seemed like a good deal with lots of great reviews on Amazon. Now for food, I decided to go with just a giant block of compressed dust that tastes like it's been sitting in a pile of feces for a week. Yeah because why not? It's simple, it's easy. I don't need to carry a stove with me. And I get, <sighs> hmm, I get 410 calories per biscuit. So that's pretty good. And if I don't feel like eating this, I can use it as a weapon. So that's a win. Okay, for the container, I kind of had a debate. I could have gotten a smaller stainless steel container for about $5 more, or I could have just gone with more water, which obviously I decided to go with more water because all I really need is a container for water and the ability to purify said water, and I can use a shirt as a pre-stage filter to get rid of you know any sort of debris that's in the water. And since I have this gigantic brick of awesome, yummy, tasty biscuits, I don't need a stove, I don't need stainless steel, I don't need anything like that for cooking purposes or boiling water. So I did not factor this into my budget, but I had this 10 liter bag laying around, I think it was sent to me for review eons ago, it's dirt cheap, and I just threw a change of clothes in here because I feel like if I'm out in the woods for three days, I might wanna change my clothes. It might make life a lot better. 
So after I took care of the basics that you just saw, here's all the other gear that I threw in there. You know, some socks and underwear, another pair, map, and compass, inflatable pillow, baby sack, pellet gun, shamog, gloves, cool zombie style hatchet from Alpha Outpost, pug spray, which is an absolute must, Steiner binos, also really just an essential item for 72 hour bag, a headlamp, and uh, just a ton of different stuff, you know, like even in here, this, um, this MSM pouch right here has a whole bunch of like hunting and survival and fishing type of equipment in it. So we got the pack for $40 and the rest of that foundational gear that I showed you guys that goes in the pack ran me close to a total of about $150 counting the pack because there's some items in there that I have to have. I know you, you cover the five C's first, that's great, but listen, I'm scared of the dark. I might want a flashlight. I'm kind of clumsy. I might want an actual decent first aid kit, you know? And then, you know, I might actually have to go to the bathroom while I'm out here. I know that would be shocking because I have the giant brick of awesome biscuits to eat that will probably make sure I never do again in my entire life, but I still want to have some toilet paper with me. So those are some of the basics that I feel are just absolutely necessary to building out a basic bug out bag. But I would love to hear from you guys. Do you think you can get it done? at a $100 price point without going to Dollar General? And yes, absolutely, Walmart is a viable alternative. I just chose to do all the shopping on Amazon because number one, I don't have to leave my house. Number two, I get to like, you know, compare prices between different products and different manufacturers. And number three, it arrives in a couple days. And then finally, I just hate going to Walmart because people are weird there. There's always tons of crowds. It's an annoying experience and you can get shot for no freaking reason at Walmart. So why go to Walmart unless you absolutely have to. So an open challenge to you to build a bug out bag for about $100 or show me a YouTube channel who's done that without going to Dollar General and who actually gets on trains with their gear versus what a lot of people do, which is just pointless. Here I am with all my cool gear sitting in the comfort of my house and some of it's still actually in packaging, but I'm gonna talk about how I'm definitely gonna get out there and train with it, which annoys the living crap out of me because people get sucked into this and they just buy crap and this dude is promoting shit that like he doesn't even use. Like it's magic. Okay, sorry for the rant. Anyways, back to our usual programming. Thanks a lot to Rebo Gear for sponsoring this. Make sure you're subscribed because I'm gonna be giving away an EDC sling bag. I'm gonna be giving away the bag that you just saw and then I'm gonna be giving, giving away a slightly smaller version in black multicam. So you're gonna to wanna to be on board for this giveaway. We're celebrating breaking 20,000 subs. So give yourself a big pat on the back because I wouldn't even be talking about this if it wasn't for you and your support. So thanks a lot guys. I hope you have an awesome day and I will see you in the next video. Peace.